Hello, angels. Today I'm back for another Love Simon video. Now this one's going to be a spoiler review, so if you've not seen the film, I definitely recommend you wait till you can see the film. Um, before you watch this because I will literally be giving away like the entire movie like I'm going to be talking about every single scene in the entire movie so if you don't want to get spoiled I highly recommend you go watch the film if you just want to watch the film through my descriptions you can also watch this video too like I'm not judging you this is gonna be less of a review and more of like a commentary and like I don't really know how to explain it because in my last video on my non-spoiler review I really did go into depth of my review about the film really more like critiquing it not really critiquing it but it was more review style than um, like commentary style how I usually do so I'm gonna be hitting a couple main points in the movie so I can kind of control and organize my thoughts on it because usually I'm a very unorganized person when it comes to videos and I just spew my thoughts and give you a bunch of word vomit but I'm going to be kind of like structuring this out a little bit more ha 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 I'm so prepared firstly I want to talk about his family now obviously I'm going to be talking about the talks that he had with his parents because they were just such a big part of the film that I thought were really just touching to watch and really like had me in my feelings right there so what i liked about it was that when he came out like these weren't the initial conversations that he had they weren't really emotional at first and they really didn't talk that much when he first came out because it's like this really like awkward thing and like in that moment in time like he didn't really want to talk about it which is very understandable but then like after a while he didn't really talk to his mom or dad they kind of talked to him and they kind of they kind of opened up to him rather than it just being all of him opening up they really like opened up to their son and told him how they were like genuinely feeling about this the one with his mom was so beautiful and I think Jennifer Garner did like a wonderful job on this part honestly like Josh and Jennifer like just had me so like in the feels in this movie and they really did have like a really good like chemistry with the, the family and each other and what's so cool about it is that like Jennifer and Josh like definitely like had their fair share of like rom-coms and like when they were young they were the main leads in rom-coms and now they're playing the parents of a rom and it, it's just it's really cute oh an amber alert Amber Alert San Antonio. Aww. Anyways, back to my video. <laughs> but now going back into his mom's talk, I just like felt everything that she was saying in it. The way that she was saying everything, you know, how she was like, you know, I felt like you were holding her breath and now you know you were still the same you even though like he said it, she really wanted him to hear it from her that he would still be the same Simon he was before. It was really just a fucking impactful scene that just pulled on your heartstrings so much and really did just oh like it was like i'm being stabbed like it was really it was just truly like amazing and like i feel like it's really important to see that kind of talk play out on screen and the difference between the two talks between the one they had with his mom and the one that he has with his dad were really the contrast between them was really funny because it's like his dad is like more of the goofball the more comedic approach to it and to see him open up and be um emotional with his son and not so like jokey about it and take a little bit more serious approach with which we haven't seen from his character in the film that much um and then you know his mom is like a therapist so like she really just has a way with words and she's supposed to know how to handle emotions and know like the human brain and all that but you know she still had a hard time approaching her son about this because it was something that's so personal to him and she did a wonderful job at talking to him and then with his dad it was like you could see the regret and the remorse he felt for everything over the years and I think that was really important for Simon to see even though Simon knew like his dad had no ill intentions with his jokes or anything like that he was just joking around even though those jokes could have hurt his son when he was talking about it he was like oh I'm so stupid in four years how could I have not known and just it was a lot 
and I just I really loved how they approached it and it wasn't like with this dad and the son it wasn't like oh I've lost this person you know like I, I lost my son like he's not even my real son anymore like oh, how are we supposed to talk about girls now like, it was really about his dad feeling guilty and regretful for everything that he said over the past years and letting his son know like that he like loves him so much and i just i really loved that and i really loved their two talks i will say another thing that i really liked about the movie was it kind of made fun of the whole coming out bit i don't know because we all see coming out as like, this really big serious thing which it can be in some cases but i really liked that this movie kind of made fun of coming out in a sense you know with the whole like you know when he mentions like the whole like i'll you know be out and proud in college and it kind of it pokes fun at like the gay in college type of thing where they're really like LGBT and proud which is like not a bad thing but it's just it, it kind of made fun of that which I, I really liked and they made fun of coming out in a way with the whole um, coming out a straight thing it made it sound so ridiculous like I think like a lot of people will realize how ridiculous coming out is when they saw it when, when people said they were heterosexual because in our heads heterosexual is normal so coming out about it and being nervous to say it seems funny to us which ha which is how it should be for gay people bi people pan people asexuals transgender it should be like that for everything it should it shouldn't be this very big dramatic thing which like it is okay if you if coming out was a very dramatic thing for you but i feel like the media has portrayed it as like this really like big thing because you're so weird if you're gay and you have to come out and you have to you know tell people this and it's supposed to be this big thing when it's really like it's actually pretty fucking funny to be like oh hey just to let you know here here's my preference and here's the here's what attracts me this is what i'm attracted to it it, it does sound a little it does sound a little little weird if you think about it so i really love that they flipped it in the film and and showed why is straight the default why do only gay people have to come out and they showed it with straight people and you know i I'm sure a lot of straight people have, oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> straight people coming out, that sounds so funny and that is so goofy. Well, guess what, you heterosexuals? That is how ridiculous it sounds when, when a gay person comes out as well, or a bisexual person, or asexual because it's like i shouldn't be having to tell you this like why am i telling you who i'm attracted to like it's a weird thing to tell someone and this is no way make me making fun of like i don't know like i feel like it is but it's also like i hope we come to one day where like we don't have to come out where it can just be like that's cool if you're gay like and we're already kind of getting to that point and i feel like they showed that really well in the movie that it was like abby and then his parents reactions like they were all very like okay and he was like you're not surprised and abby was like do you want me to be surprised and it's like the way that they reacted was a very i felt like a really realistic and kind of a happy realistic approach because sometimes it, it can go really bad and people can be like oh what the fuck blah, blah, blah. I felt like normalized like gay people in a, in a big way so often when it's like a coming out scene it's like oh my god like ooh, ooh, ooh. like it's like a, this is a little a whole big thing it's like you know sometimes it's like really not anyways I don't know why I went so long about that like it, it didn't really make sense about anything that I was saying but you know that's just my life saying things that don't make sense moving into friends now I really wanted to talk a, a lot more about their backlash whenever they find out what Simon was doing doing and how he was lying to them and manipulating because I didn't really get to talk about this in my spoiler review because it's like a really big part of it you know blackmailing blah 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 so like after he initially gets outed they're all very like worried about him they're texting him they're calling him and he immediately like he just doesn't want to talk about it which like is very understandable in Simon's point of view like it's just like not right now guys and so he just basically like cuts all ties from them all for all of break for all of christmas break and then when he, they finally like over that course they like hang out they blah 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 and they kind of realize what he's doing so whenever they finally see each other when they're going back to school they confront him about all this and i feel like the only person that i could have sympathized with was leah and why i say that is because it's like 
Abby and Nick, it was sort of this thing where it was like, like I get where you're coming from. Like I honestly do get where Nick and Abby were coming from. Like you, you tried to get me with Martin. You told me that Leah liked me. I'm not some piece of meat. You can just pawn off to Martin and all that stuff. And it was honestly like, it was like, I was very indifferent on this and I really did have a like a, a weird time like constructing my opinions about it because it was such like a like a torn thing I felt because I was like what would I do if I was in Simon's position would I go to that extent to keep my secret from being outed and I feel like that was one thing that they were they weren't like understanding and also like a part of it was like it wasn't this whole thing about the movie, a lot of people say he was scared of being outed. I don't really think Simon was scared of people knowing he was gay or being outed by Martin. The whole thing was he didn't want to lose Blue. Because if he knew if those emails got leaked, he would lose Blue. Because that's literally what happens in the movie. The emails get leaked and then he loses Blue and that was the, that was the biggest part. Whenever he got outed, it was much more of an anger thing that he felt. He looked very frustrated, very angry. And then like once Blue sent that final email, like he actually like, broke down and he started crying and it was very emotional. People knowing that he was gay, like it wasn't like, I'm terrified of people knowing that I'm gay. It wasn't, that wasn't really the main point of the movie, which I feel like is being misinterpreted by a lot of people. I think a lot of people think that he's scared of being outed, even though that's like a, no one should be outed. Like you should always have that choice to yourself. It was more about losing blue. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. I was talking about the friends. Okay, I will get more into blue and the emails and all that later, but I was talking about the friends. I much more sympathized with Leah rather than Abby and Nick because I felt like the thing that he did to Leah was a lot worse than what he did to Abby and Nick because the way like Nick and Abby approached it were like, you kept this apart for three months. And I was like, okay, like calm down. Like the way they said it, I was like, what What, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, calm down. But with Leah, she was like, you set me up to get my heart broken. And I thought that was really sad. Now let's talk about Leah's feelings. Leah's feelings, her whole, I'm in love with you. It was there. I don't really know what to say about it because it's like, okay, and? Like, yeah, it's unrequited love, but it's also like, what? Like, it, it was honestly like, we all knew what was coming, but it was also like, okay, what the fuck is happening? Like, because you throughout the film, you see Leah going through her own struggles or whatever. You can obviously tell that she likes Simon, but then it's like, she says it to him. She's like, I'm in love with you. And it's like, even Simon was like, um, what? Cause I don't want to be like, oh, like she's so like, ooh, like why would she have si feelings for Simon? Like it's understandable, but I don't really, I, I don't. It's like, what do you say about that? Like, it's really weird. That was not in the book. <laughs> in the book, she was like pissed off, like genuinely like pissed that he told Abby before her. Like she was like livid. And then in this one, it was it was like, oh, you told Abby before me. Hmm. And that was kind of her main issue that she was mad about in the book rather than be like, I'm in love with you, which we were all like, where did that come from? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, her feelings, were they really necessary for the plot? Eh. It, they could have gone without that in the movie. I don't think they would have lost much if they didn't put her loving him in the movie. I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. I'm sure people have a lot of different opinions on Leah's feelings and all that shit. I don't really know, I don't know. I feel like everyone's gonna slice me. Talking a little bit more about Martin, I don't, I think they did a really good job at making Martin unlikable, which is the whole point of having a villain or a bad guy is to make them really unlikable, but sometimes, Sometimes in movies, they give you a weird backstory on them to why they're like that. And you're like, why are you telling me this? Like, just make him an evil guy. I don't want to feel any sympathy for him. They, I feel like, you know, in a sense, they tried to do that with a little bit of a, him confessing and, you know, getting made fun of a lot. But it was like, I really could not sympathize with him because Martin is just like an asshole. Um, but also kind of seeing that Martin did feel regret for what he did. And this is no way me making an excuse for him, but you did see him feel regret after he did it when he sees Simon getting like made fun of 
um, when he sees him on the Ferris wheel by himself, like he does feel some regret. And I feel like in a way, like Simon didn't forgive him, but like after he kind of snapped on him, I think Simon felt better and he kind of like just calmed down from it. Because when Martin came up to, to the Ferris wheel, he didn't seem like he like hated Martin with all his guts, but he didn't he didn't like him but still i don't really know how to explain it but it, i liked that they kept him like unlikable majority of the time and just gave him like a little bit of regret at the end made him seem like a little bit of a morally intact human towards the end of the movie you know what i'm saying okay so how about we talk about the halloween party uh, um oh my god i loved this halloween party because you know we ever see like Halloween parties in movies it's always like huh, like everyone hates my costume and like I'm the odd kid out going to a Halloween party like no one likes me like I'm the outsider huh, it's the popular kids party and I'm going to it and everyone's gonna make fun of my costume that's usually how it goes in high school movies when it comes to Halloween parties this one it was like it's at Bram's house you know he's my he's my homie he's my He's my bro. <laughs> Not really. When he goes to the Halloween party, like he has a suspicion that it's Bram that's blue. Um, <laughs> we see Simon not like he kind of like lets loose a little bit. Now, Simon's not really a super like, ah, like, I don't know, introverted, but not like super like antisocial introverted, like to an extreme. He is just a little bit more laid back. So to see him like loosen up during that party, low key a little bit to impress Bram, cause he was like, oh yeah, let's drink, blah, blah, blah. And then he go, after he's, you know, a little two turn, he goes up to ask Bram if he is blue. And then he goes into the room and then he's like, oh, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god, I think Bram is straight. That's literally what his mind is like. He's like, oh my god, a hetero on my watch? What? Yo, what up, Tom? You hetero bitch. Hey, man. What's, what's up, man? You, you touch any boobs lately? You straight f Barack Obama and a minion? In what world? Is that considered bestiality if you are with a minion? That's not what he's thinking. That's not what I was thinking. I was like, why is a minion hooking up? with my boy Bram. Like out of all things, it had to be a minion. Like why couldn't it have been like a freaking, a, a who from Whoville? Like why did it have to be a minion out of all things? I don't know why I'm getting so angry about that. It's not really that big of a deal. And that's pretty much the Halloween scene for ya. Um, I don't know, I, that was one of my favorite parts about this movie, I don't know. <laughs> Garrett with his karaoke, Simon getting in on the karaoke. It was all, all around a good scene. Also Bram and Simon, playing beer pong and the fist bump hell yeah going into a more serious emotional scene i'm going to talk about a little bit more about bram or blue breaking things off so simon gets outed blue sees that he gets outed and decides to break things off with simon and this scene was like it was it was a lot i'll tell you that it was a fucking lot and i literally wanted to die in this scene like i literally wanted to actually jump off a roof because it was so hard to watch it was just like no. You know how like he starts like Simon starts typing he's like my whole world's falling apart like I literally felt like my whole world was falling apart I'm like everything is ruined in my life and I'm literally like going to crumble right now You're just watching this happen and you're like he literally just got outed and now this is happening You feel like it's all happening in slow motion and you're like yes, trust him, yes. <laughs> He's like reading the email you're like no why and he's like you just can't do this and then he deactivates his email and i was like i'm going to literally fling myself off this planet right now <laughs> like bitch and then everything that i'm saying is basically probably what simon is thinking like he it was just it was so hard to watch and see simon just break and just shatter basically rewinding a little bit to when he has the suspicion of who blue is the people that he thinks it is is bram lyle cow i'm confused And that's it. Um, why did I feel like it was more people? But it's literally only those three. So he thinks it's Bram for like a very short amount of time where he's like, orange Oreos, the Halloween Oreos. <laughs> and then he moves on to Lyle. Now, the jump to Lyle was 
so it was a very big reach to me because it was like oh I saw him go on his work break and then he was typing on his phone and then I got an email haha ha, I'm Sherlock bitch I found it out and that's kind of how Simon's mind works I don't know I felt like the jump to Lyle was pretty big to me and then like I personally thought it was a little bit more of he wanted it to be Lyle in a sense. Like he liked Lyle and he sort of had like growing crush on Lyle. I don't know, that's how it seemed to me. If you read the book that that's how it kind of was for Cal, like he kind of had like a crush on Cal in the book. So then that's who he just thought it was and he started connecting dots with Cal and kind of making assumptions because he wanted it to be Cal. He kind of had a little, little bit of a crush on Cal. But I feel like that's how it was with Lyle in the movie, which I did not think it would be Lyle. I thought they would just stick to what happened in the book and make it be like, oh, I want it to be Cal, my, you know, Prince Cal, blah, blah, blah. But it really wasn't. It was definitely more that for Lyle. Connections for Blue to Cal, I think were, it made sense, you know, middle of nowhere, middle of nowhere. Got it. Got the connection. The connection between Bram and Blue made sense. You know, the Oreos, the Oreos made sense. And then Lyle to Blue, I don't know where the fuck that happened, but it did, but I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Catching into Oreos, whenever he gets the final email from Blue, there's like five open packs of Oreos in his room. And I was like, okay, this is a big thing with the Love Simon promotion team. They're always fucking talking about Oreos, which I was like, you know, Oreos were in the book, but I don't I don't remember them being this um, relevant and such a big thing to the story in the book but I guess it is to the movie and they really weren't to the movie let's just be real like he mentioned Oreos once but there's fucking like 10 packs of opened Oreos in his room and I'm like what like at least make them unopened so it like he like goes through pack and then he opens a new one because if they're all open that means they're all probably gonna go stale and they weren't different flavors they weren't anyways that was just something that i noticed while watching it let's talk about the carnival scene you know what in a way i really liked it in a way i didn't really like it why i say i didn't like it is because i felt like since the whole school was basically watching him it made it really it made it harder to watch and it also i feel like took away the in some of the intimacy for Bram and Simon. And that's just for me. You guys may have liked that, but I just wish that it was a little bit more of like a private moment for them. But I don't know, like I don't, I think that was one of like the downsides of the movie for me was that it, when they had their first meeting, when they met each other, it was in front of like a lot of people, which I don't know. So he's on the Ferris wheel for a while, as we know. And then when Martin comes up and he goes, oh, Simon, it's me, I'm blue. And like, when he first walks up and he doesn't say anything, I heard the audience of the movie theater gasp as if they were really thinking that Martin was blue. I was honestly kind of offended. Like, you have the audacity to even think and gasp as if you actually think Martin is blue. And I went to two early screenings, the one on the press tour and then the one that was like an AMC promotion or something. In both of those showings, the audience gasped as if they really thought Martin was blue. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like I was actually kind of upset. Like I was actually kind of getting like personally offended. Like. Like really, in this moment, you should be sitting there like this. Cause we already know that it's not Martin. Even if you don't read the book, you should know it's not gonna be Martin. You should be sitting there freaking quiet, unsurprised and be like, well, man, it's not Martin. So I'm not, even, I'm not gonna fall for that. They fell for it. They really did fall for that movie little um, pretend plot twist. And I was not here for it because I was like, like not in one single goddamn universe would Martin be blue, okay? That's it. <laughs> Don't even gasp. Don't even usher a word that even hints to you thinking that Martin would be blue, okay? Enough of me ranting. Let's move on to this moment that they had. So <laughs> the moment that they had, it was literally, it was the cutest because Simon, literally Bram comes up and he's like, can I sit there? And Simon's 
dumb ass says, sorry, but the seat's kind of taken, bitch. <laughs> Brim's like, yeah, I know. And then Simon's like, oh my God. <laughs> like he finally gets it and he's like, oh, it's you. And I'm like, finally, you got there. You got there, Simon. <laughs> like, it was so funny just to be like, well, the seat's kind of taken. <laughs> the worry and like, just like, well, it's kind of taken. <laughs> it was so funny. And then Bram's like, yeah, bitch. Like, I know, like, it's me. I'm blue. <laughs> Do I need arrows pointing at me and a sign that says I'm blue? <laughs> so he sits down. They have their, like, weird like awkward moment where they go up on the ferris wheel a little bit so they can reach the top and then they kind of they just you know they talk a little bit then they kiss and the second one the, the first one it was like that's a really soft kiss and then the second one i was like whoa whoa oh hey there oh whoa <laughs> that escalated a little bit and then the third one <laughs> they, they, these bitches kiss three times on this ferris wheel and he, the third one was like a nice ending kiss to that scene like it was really like it was some closure for me <laughs> one thing that i wish that they didn't cut out from the book and i wish that they included this scene from the book was when simon's basically looking at bram's ham bram's ham bram's ham bram's ham hands and he knows that like Bram isn't out yet and he doesn't want to like force him or anything. Um, but he like says so softly, he's like, I really want to hold your hand. And then Bram just goes, so hold it. And then he holds it. And it was just such a soft scene. And I wish that they included that in the movie because it would have been so damn cute. Like you couldn't cut out one of the kisses to give me a little hand holding action. Like hand holding is literally the cutest like it's so cute they cut it out like it, it's really not that big of a deal like i wasn't mad about it at all another thing that i wish they didn't cut out which is not really that they cut out but i wish they could have included it was leah nick and simon in the basement so in the book they kind of like go to the basement a lot that's kind of like their hangout place and i wish that they included that because i I thought that would have been like a cool thing to add to it and show a little bit more about their friendship because I think the movie focused a lot on their fo the friendship between the four of them, which is important. And I, I do love Abby and I think that her addition to the friendship was important, but in the book, it definitely showed you a little bit more about Nick, Simon, and Leah's relationship, you know, when they hang out in the basement and all that stuff. I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. I just thought it would have been cute if they added the basement like hangout scenes in there but whatever the movie is so good that like it's okay oh one thing i do want to touch on is kanan and nick's chemistry in the like short scenes that they had at the end of the movie i just i thought their chemistry was really good in those parts for two characters and two actors that didn't have that many scenes in the movie together and to sort of build that chemistry you know like in other movies these two actors will have like a lot of time to build some chemistry throughout the film. But I think that they had really good chemistry on the Ferris wheel scene and the ending scene, which I think is something that is should be praised because they didn't really have that many scenes in the movie together to kind of have an advantage to create chemistry. But they did it anyways. They did it anyways, you know? They got that chemistry on lockdown, bitch. I mean, because if we're being honest, like Bram's supposed to be more of like a background friend. Like, he's supposed to be like not the main core friends but like a lunch table friend the person that everyone knows in the movie but he's not supposed to be like a main friend you know what I'm saying it was great that they got they still had that ending chemistry in the last scenes but throughout the movie like Bram's supposed to be in the audience eyes as like this friend of a friend sort of person and he in the movie like he only really had like a more prominent role when Simon did think it was actually Bram and then it, after that it kind of went back to being a background character. It was just like no offense to like Bram like it was just how the movie worked and how if from an audience perspective what it would be perceived as you know what I'm saying? But I think their ending chemistry was like on point like it was amazing. The last scene in the in, well, in a movie was just so it was so cute and it, it was just it was great and but also one thing why does leah sit in the front seat if she's just gonna get out for bram to be in the front seat you know what i'm saying i know it was supposed to be like a sort of shocker that like bram would be there too but it was also like oh why don't you just sit in the back seat to begin with then we wouldn't have to do this whole moving thing and then, <laughs> 
<laughs> the way she goes, she's like on the passenger side seat. She walks around the car to go to the back seat on the driver's side. And I was like, girl, why? <laughs> just sit in the passenger side seat in the back seat like what she was just trying to get close to abby but then bram comes in and then they they do a little like super cute casual kiss and it was just like i'm gonna die you're gonna make my heart melt oh i love you so much also if you don't like the two teachers the principal and the drama teacher honestly like you're probably the most bland unseasoned person ever if you didn't like those two characters because they were so fucking funny i can't wait to get flamed by these love simon stands oh what the f oh. so i think i covered a good majority of the movie i think i did oh lord i swear to god if i like edit this and realize like i missed so much things i'm gonna be so upset but if i did miss anything which i'm pretty sure i did um leave that in the comment section down below oh also i went to the press tour thing the press tour screening and you know like how like nick and like abby and greg were all there and they like come out and like that yeah, it was very disappointing <laughs> and why it was disappointing was that they came out before the movie came on and just said, basically just said, I hope you enjoy and then left. And I was like, okay, like what was the point in coming out here if you were just gonna come and then tell us to go to another location after the movie, but they didn't do shit. And I was like, why, why'd you even come out here? Honestly, literally Nick looked like he wanted to actually die. I was like, dude, like, Honestly, why did they even come out here if he literally wants to die and then you're gonna just tell me to enjoy the movie, which I already will. You don't need to tell me that and tell me to go to Wheeler's afterwards, which you can just told someone else to tell me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was the point? I'm not even gonna say I was appreciative of them coming out because it was like, there was really no point for you to come to the theater because all you did was say hi and then leave. What was the point? So I think that wraps it up for today guys. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you liked Love, Simon, give it a thumbs up. If you ignore the thumbs up button, that literally means that you hated Love, Simon and you want it to die. So if you don't want Love, Simon to die and you want it to um, receive support, you will give this video a thumbs up because if you don't, you're homophobic and racist. So you will also be deemed as an anti Love, Simon fan if you don't subscribe. I don't make the rules, guys. So just subscribe. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!